turn quickly to John, the 18th chapter. I just want to talk to you. When I left, before I left, I had, before we could start talking about God wants us blessed and giving us a right relationship with finances and money, I have to first get our minds renewed. So if you don't have that CD, then please see Miss Elma after service and she'll give it to you to catch you up to speed. Because I could not teach on money. Because the first time I start teaching on money, the first thing y'all gonna tell me would not open your mouth and tell me, but you know y'all gonna think it, then I'm gonna be in the spirit and I'm gonna feel it. And so I'm gonna address it. So I just went ahead and addressed it. And that is until God, until until you learn that everything that you have all belongs to God, that you just a man manager of it, then, then, then I can't tell you give God his 10% if you think that's your 10%. That's right. So I have to teach you and instruct you in the word of God to show you that God is not only owner, God is also possessor right. of everything. Amen. Say everything. everything. But the goodness of God is where he has given us the ability to manage some things. Right. Even the very breath that you breathe when you go on your job doesn't belong to you. Nor does the activity of your limbs belong to you. Come on, somebody. So even us belongs to him. So how can we own something that we are not owners of? Amen. Amen. Try it with your house if you haven't paid cash for it and see. Stop paying your payments for about six months. See how much you own that house. Because the rightful owner will show up and kick you out. Thank God he don't kick us out. But he does expect us to be educated. Amen? So the kingdom replies to how uh, we don't belong to the world. And, and this is what I would, so let's go to verse 36 and 37. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. I love this little Bible. I, I preach Wednesday night. We had a pop. How many was here Wednesday night? We had, we had church up in there. Mm -hmm. It's so much so that I, I, re, I dismissed y'all and I started. Nikki said, Mom, do you know the people was walking out the door and then all of a sudden you started back up pray, praying again. They came back and we had to sit down. Even after you this, we had church up in here Wednesday night. Amen. Anyway, so here, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And verse 36, it says, my kingdom, okay, let, let me go to 35 so it can make some sense. And uh, it says, am I a Jew, exclaimed Pilate, it, it is your own nation and the high priests who have handed you over to me. What have, what have I had to do with you? What have you done? This is what is interesting. Jesus began to talk to Pilate. He said, my kingdom, replied Jesus, does not belong to this world. My kingdom. When God calls us kingdom people, he's saying you and I have to operate, Serge, on another level. And the reason why following the world system in God's kingdom don't work, because it's not... It, it is illegal to operate the world system in God's kingdom because the world and God's kingdom have nothing, not, nothing to do with each other. They're not even common. So he says, my kingdom, replied Jesus, does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my subjects or, or, or my servants, that, that could be used as subjects, would have fought to save me from being delivered up to the Jews. But, in fact, my kingdom has no origin here. My kingdom has not this type or this origin, which means what you're experiencing, Pilate, and what you are accustomed to, it has, it's like apples and oranges when it comes down to my kingdom. I want you to wash your mind this morning. If you're trying to operate your life, on, on from the world system and yet call yourself a Christian, there's going to be a conflict. Light and darkness will clash big time. Just like oil and water don't mix, so does light and darkness don't mix. And here, Jesus was telling Pilate, he said, Pilate, let me tell you something. My kingdom is not of this origin. In other words, there is no comparison, but I love this. Watch this now. He says this, 
He says, so then, here's Pilate speaking, he says, so then, you're king. And I love this response. Jesus said, yes, I am. I'm a king. Yes, I am. You said truly that I'm a king. Listen to this, verse 37. For this purpose was I born. And for this purpose I have come into the world. To give testimony to the truth. Everyone who is a friend of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate says, what is the truth? <coughs> Just like the world, they may ask you what's the truth, but they don't have no, they, they, they don't have no desire to know your truth. And that's why it's very hard when you try to leave here and talk to your unsaved girlfriend or your unsaved guy friend and they can't understand what you're talking about. They can't understand what you're talking about because it's spiritually discerned. That's why when people come into the church and they're not spiritual, they wonder, well, she's just making noise or he's just making noise. The reason why they can make that, they can, they can make that assessment is because that when God begins to speak through his man or woman of God, if it's somebody that's illegal, come on somebody, he makes sure they can't hear what the person is saying. Why? Because they don't belong to his kingdom. Spiritual things are only spiritually deserved. That's, right. That's, right. That's why I told you today when I got up, I knew I had to preach and I didn't want to preach in that atmosphere. I said, oh, there's low energy here. In other words, I can't bring spiritual truths into a fleshly mindset. In other words, if you down, down comes from death. Come on, down comes from discouragement. Down comes from depression. Down comes because things ain't going your way. Down comes because things are out of control in your life. Well, I gotta bring you from that mindset, which is the world system, up to another level. So when I get ready to speak the word, I'm not speaking on dead ears. Yeah, it's good. Amen. Oh, we're going somewhere. Amen. This church is moving. Amen. And some folks don't get left behind if they don't get with the ball game. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But that's God's system too. Amen. To leave some behind. Yes. Why would he leave them behind? Because they're not willing to give themselves to him. Amen. The Bible tells you don't, you don't cast your pearls. You don't give away. Remember, remember the woman, the Canaanite woman, asking Jesus to heal her daughter? And he said, uh uh, this is this this bread that comes from me is the children's bread. But she knew she was outside of God's kingdom, but wanted what he had. And she found out what the people of God, the children of God, had that turns God's heart upside down, and it's called faith. So when she asked him, she said this. He, she, he said, no, the bread belongs to the children. And she said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table that the children drop. When he heard it, he said, oh my God, look like you've been around some believers. And she was saying, I know I'm not one of yours, but let me eat the crumbs. Which she understood that there is such wealth when you give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's so much more in return. Oh my God. That there's so much more in saints of God. When we give our lives to God. Not just money. That's why I don't want you to get hung up on money. I, I, I'm teaching it, and you probably not heard it on TVN or Dayscar or any other any other network. Why? Because I've been where you are and had nothing, okay? Then had something, then lost, and then they had nothing and had something again. So I understand on both sides of this equation here where you sit. So I don't want to give you some 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 special message that 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 doesn't keep your circumstances in mind. 
but I'm not giving you a pass either. Because if I give you a pass, you'll never walk into the things that God has for you to walk in. If I keep, if I keep pacifying you and say, oh, I'm so sorry, you lost your job and you ain't got nothing. No, get up, let's pray, let's believe God, but you got to give God what belongs to him. You, we cannot extract anything from God, come on, if we're not putting something in. <laughs> If you won't be with me. <laughs> if my kingdom, so my kingdom did not belong to this world. Which means that it's high time for us to learn how to operate in the kingdom of God. It's time to put the, 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 the word of God to the test. It's not good just to have your sticker and your bumper sticker and your and your Bible on your coffee table anymore or on your on your mobile device and you're not using it. It will do us no good, <coughs> excuse me, if you don't have it in your heart. That's right. And I'm gonna tell you, this this sword here, this weapon here is so powerful that the first thing it's gonna do is gonna turn hell upside down in your life. And, and let, 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 me, let me tell you this. Let me, let me tell you this also. So, so sometimes when you begin to put pressure on the word, the, the Bible says in, in Psalms, I, I believe it's Psalms 105, it says that Joseph stayed in prison until the word tried him. And the purpose of that was that, first of all, this word got to drive off everything that's not like God. Yeah. So what Satan does is that he used the, that opportunity to bring 